right toe pink is going on the wall. This is Roski. <laughs> Twenty uh, eight gauge, really thick material. We cannot do the standing seam on the joint, so we have to use the seam covers. Pressure cleat is already installed. See how we don't go all the way to the corner? We have to leave 12 or 14 inches. So we can easy put the uh, coping on top of the pressure cleat. As you notice, we don't have any wood right now here. We cannot raise it any higher because we have already uh, the height that we need. So we cannot uh, exceed that height. We cannot put anything here, so it will go right on the, on the block. So we have to seal it pretty good. This is the inside corner. I'll show you how we're doing it. And then step by step, how we install the coping. All right, what is uh, pressure cleat is? It's the piece of metal that you bend really close to the profile of your coping that you snap your coping on from the outside for cosmetic purposes. So cosmetically, it looks really nice from the outside. Inside, you have to fasten it to the wall uh, with the, with fasteners. It depends what you have, wood or concrete. So when you fasten the cleat to the wall, you have to use something as flat as possible. So it doesn't, uh, but because if it's too tight, you'll see the bumps on the metal. Unfortunately, we couldn't find anything better than this, but uh, since they're pushed in inside, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be visible from the outside, especially on a uh, 28 gauge uh, steel. Keep in mind that uh, all the sheet metal is coming from the uh, sheet metal shop uh, uh, covered with plastic. We took the plastic off uh, some of them that going on a, on a straight wall, but the ones that you cut never remove the plastic because it will scratch pretty badly. Uh, you have to remove the plastic only right before they put it on the wall or when it's already on the wall and remove the plastic there. And I want to correct myself. I started to cut the metal a little bit, and I not I noticed it's, it's it's really really heavy gauge. So it's not 28 gauge. It's a 20. It's a gauge 24, which is uh, one fortieth of the inch. It's it's really thick gauge, and uh, you have to have a good pair of snips. And my favorite are uh, my favorite with snips. It's a uh, it's snips uh, from Fane made in Germany. Milwaukee is pretty good too, but what I like about them that it's a very thin uh, nose at the end and uh, it's a really, really reliable uh, brand. Uh, has a logo lo like that with, a, with the letter F, Fane. Really good brand. So let's get started. Okay, so the width of our coping is 8 inch. Uh, I measured it. Uh, I need a I need a size 20 and a half to the outside uh, bend. So that's where I'm gonna have my bend uh, outside of the corner. So how I cutting my coping? 45. So we have eight inches uh, of the cut. I have to measure eight inches on another side. You'll see why a little later. So I have to, and I trim a little bit off from the 90 this way, because when I bend my coping, I want to make sure that I have enough room if the wall is not straight. So I have to remove all this and all this side. Let me do it. Thank 
loucura snaps we have to cut this right where you want this to bend all right to recap i cut the drip the drip band from the front i remove this hole what i left i left uh, a piece of metal so i can bend it and have it back up at the end and here i removed eight eight inches both ways from the middle line 45 here and a couple of degrees here what i'm doing now i'm testing it so it will be like that and i'm gonna bend that piece and i cut the notch here as well so it's gonna go like this on the wall so again don't remove the plastic by the time uh before you put it on the wall all right let's put it on the wall all right now the coping is on the wall alex removing the plastic now it's not attached but it snapped on both sides for the uh, tension cleat and i'll show you how i'm gonna finish this up this already bent here that's 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 see the backup material there so when i uh when i put the silicone it will be it will be metal at the back and let me show you how we're gonna finish the 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 45. now let's get to 45 how to make it uh, look nice and uh, and safe because this is pretty sharp you, you can cut yourself some guys do the caulking on top some guys do the caulking underneath and and, and see the the thing here if we didn't have a back uh, backup metal there it would be a gap because the wall is not straight so uh, the panel is already anchored we anchor it in the middle and then uh, on every uh, seam cover that's the uh, anchors we're using those are real good so what I'm what I'm doing on the 45 I'm using a UT channel I bent the channel I put a hand on half inch half inch and a couple of inches use it from the color of you like we have a black color so we're using like, like a black aluminum so you just slide this thing underneath trim it here so now the only thing that's left to do I'm just gonna put a little bit of, sil of silicone here not too much okay now the end cap for the entrance we have to put end caps on the entrance when you walk on the when you walk on the stairs and it has to be looking good and it has to be safe all right first for the end cap we have to bend the piece like this it's just uh, we cut off a piece of uh, 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 coping cut in half that's the other half that's left it's gonna go on another side it will go on this side but what we're doing i'm cutting it exactly exactly straight bending like a three quarter or inch but I, I bent a little more than 90 and why I'm doing this because I want to I want this to be pushed like this so it will be tight on the end cap okay the coping that's going to start the wall it's the same profile but I bent one inch so it will not be any sharp uh, ends on the coping and i'm gonna put it on 
All right, that how it looks. We started the coping half inch further, so we have like well, three eighths. So we have uh, room for for black caulking, and you have to round up your drip so nobody will cut itself, right? That's how it looks. Now the last thing left to be done is seam covers. Every seam like this should be covered with the cover like that. Uh, there are two types. One is under, one is over. I have an over one. I like it better and it looks better. So first we have to do the caulking here. And the seam cover is bent really good because it's catching on, on, on the outside. On the inside it's a little open, but we put a fastener there. Let me show you how we do it. So we have a seam covers right now on each seam. That's gonna go really quickly. 